What is up, Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today, we're going to take an advanced look at the Witcher Omnibus from Dark Horse Comics. So, please stay tuned. Okay, now before we get started, I'd like to say thank you to the folks at Dark Horse for sending us an advanced copy of the book. Um, so, here is the front. It's that nice Mike Mignola cover. Um, the back of the book retails for $24.99. Uh, the contents of the book, collecting issues 1 through 5 of the Witcher comic series, House of Glass, Fox Children, Curse of Crows, and the Killing Monsters one-shot. So you get about 16 issues collected in here. And let's look at the spine of the book. This book has been previously collected as a library edition. Well, let's look at it. One thing I wanted to point out, it is a softcover omnibus from Dark Horse. Uh, so it is the size of... A Marvel trade paperback or a DC trade paperback is what these are. The library edition has been released already and it has the exact same content of this actually. Both of the books are 440 pages. So you have this beautiful cover by Mike Mignola and Dave Stewart and then you have Paul Tobin had written most, of, actually all of this is written by Paul Tobin and you have different artists like Joe Cario, Max Bertolini, and those gentlemen right there. So, uh, not going to play that game. The uh, book, the library edition had some issues, though. That's why I never picked it up. So I'm a big fan of the Dark Horse library editions. But I had heard that the, the binding and the spine, something was wrong with it. And I don't know. I was hoping for another reprint, so I may pick it up once they do another reprint. So, most of the stories in here are based on the popular Polish uh, book series by oh what, what, what is his name I'm sure I'm gonna end up butchering it I think it's on Un, uh, Andres uh, Sapkowski something like that oh man I'm so sorry but anyway he went on to write a series of novels uh, and it's so popular over there that it became like an animated series and then of course uh, there's gonna be a Netflix series but the reason it blew up here so much is because of the video games yeah, The Witcher 3 uh, known for its character Geralt now Geralt is a character who is a witcher or I guess a monster hunter a, a witch hunter he's here and this guy right here and he's played by Henry Cavill so it looks a lot different than the character here and in the video games uh, there is some partial nudity some lady parts are shown throughout the book so I'll, I'll say that it does have some adult content, so keep that in mind. But if you've played the video games, you kind of know what you're expecting when you look at a book like this. Uh, the artwork, honestly, I'm okay with the book this size. It doesn't have to be oversized artwork for me in order to enjoy it. Uh, mainly because I'm not blown away by the art, if I'm being honest. At least from the first couple of stories. Being a person that has not gotten into the Witcher series, like I think everybody else has, like my co-host Wonder Maddie or my brothers... Uh, I found the stories pretty unique because I've, I haven't even played The Witcher. I know what it is, and because of my buddy Rob, who's on the show, and, and Maddie, I, I know the characters and stuff. Uh, but it's pretty interesting for me because I I read uh, the first two stories, and to me, I thought they stood out pretty good. Like I don't, I didn't need to know about the character. I know the ba yeah, I knew the basis of the character. I knew that Geralt was. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. Is that right, or is it Geralt? Is it Geralt or Geralt? I don't know. But anyway, I know that he's a witch hunter, or I know he's a monster hunter, and that's really all I need to know, and what you need to know if you want to pick these up, uh, because the stories are fun. I've uh, it's it's violence and monsters set in this fantasy world. It has some dry wit and humor that I really enjoyed about it. At least the first two stories do, and it's set in the past because I haven't seen any of the other characters, uh, and I know the other characters because my brother is a huge fan of the toys like uh, Jennifer or Triss. Uh, those characters haven't appeared, at least uh, in the first half of the story. So I think it's all in the past before those characters make an appearance. Uh, so the artwork is what you see here. It's basically this type of art style. Um, and to me, I think that gets the job done. I don't want to flip too much through here because I don't want to spoil it. It makes the characters and the world feel like it's an actual place. And these are actual people. So... I mean, that is the job of the artist, to translate the script into sequential art, and it gets the job done. 
Uh, there are some really horrifying creatures. I kind of wish uh, Mignola had uh, done the internal artwork here. And I don't know if it's Mignola being a fan of the series or if the series itself, the video games, of course, not the books, are a fan of Mignola's art. So Now, the artwork in here, this is one of the stories I haven't read, looks a lot different and looks actually really damn good. Man, that is good. I like that. Yeah, that's, okay, so this series back here, that this is my kind of artwork. A lot more details, a lot more, a lot more realistic, less use of shadows, which is interesting for uh, this type of world. Uh, let's look at the back and look at see if there's any extras. So you do get a sketchbook, and you get pinups. This is Stan Sakai, Duncan Fregedo. You get the designs of the covers. There's another pinup by Simon Beasley, of all people. Uh, the sketchbook here from House of Glass. It's not that I'm saying that the artwork was bad towards the beginning in the first two series, but I think for me, I appreciate the art more so in the back here, uh, in the third story arc. I think this is absolutely stunning and gorgeous. Here is the progress of the cover designs and the pinup designs. Get an interview with the writer, Paul Tobin. And then you get pinups back here, which are absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if these are from the video game or from... Uh, they got to be from the video game or the books. And then The Witcher. You know, the world of The Witcher and Gwen. The art of The Witcher. Oh, that's the card game that my brother loves. Actually, he has both of these books. And then the figures and also by Paul Tobin. All these other books available from Dark Horse. Oh, he wrote Colder. I forgot about that. Yeah, I didn't know he was in Falling Skies. And that was it. That was the contents of the book. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this up or if you already have the library edition and or if you're going to pick this up because you weren't a fan of the binding of the library edition. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and remember if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.